Game Preservation suffers major setback as Game Industry Lobby's US Copyright Office. So, I remember two months ago, we had the entire European petition slash initiative of signing up for video game preservation. Asmongo covered it, Pirate Software covered it. I looked at it. I didn't cover it, I think. <laughs> but I looked at it myself. I looked at it pretty much. And the petition, the initiative, is still going strong. It is still going strong and it's still out there. So I wonder if this is about this too. I do have some things to say in regards of this. So yeah, let's go. The battle for video game preservation continues. And unfortunately, I don't have good news for you today. So we have seen Damn. movements like Stop Killing Games. There it is. That's the one I was talking about. The European Citizens Initiative. It is going strong. Right now, I think I checked it yesterday and it was at like 45-ish percent, I think. Not entirely sure, but I did check it yesterday. Um. Right, what I wanted to say before I paused was that, have you guys seen how more and more and more and more and more companies are adding the clarification of that you're purchasing a license, a digital license, and not actual game. So instead of actually giving us consumers more rights, they're being taken away even further. Isn't that just lovely, chat? Isn't that just freaking lovely? League of Legends now has the disclaimer that when you're purchasing a skin, it's a digital content. Thanks, League. Also, Steam recently added that, pretty sure. But it's, it's disgusting. It's so consumer unfriendly. It only serves corpos. Let's see what he has Good to say. Good news for you today. So we have seen movements like Stop Killing Games, which came from the crew getting shut. If owning them isn't possible, then piracy isn't stealing. You are correct, I would say. Legally, I have to say I don't condone it. Legally. But you do you down and remove from players libraries and this is essentially a petition to have government entities look at the situation and make it so that something like this just can't happen where there has to be some way that to preserve can it. still maintain access yeah to preserve it this isn't so companies have to keep support past the expiration date no this is so individuals are able to preserve it to the titles that they've purchased because the crew didn't you know give money back that you straight up remove the game's existence and said hey sorry you paid for this but it's just no longer available essentially getting scammed well just situations like that are bullshit combined with you know how many digital games we have seen fade away into obscurity and into the ether forever because digital storefront shut down from old generation consoles and the like. And so we have this other research from the Video Game History Foundation that noted and highlighted and reported that 87% of video games Aww. are missing. This is a research from July of 2023. And this same foundation decided to approach the Copyright Office of the United States of America, proposing an exemption to allow video games to be preserved in the way libraries have preserved books and you know museums have preserved art essentially allowing that access like a good thing to, to me. history in an accessible way for scholastic and research purposes so here's the proposal uh proposed exemption video games in the form of computer programs embodied in physical or downloaded formats that have been lawfully acquired as complete games that do not require access to an external computer server for gameplay and that are no longer reasonably available in the commercial marketplace basically if a game yeah. is just not purchasable through any reasonable yeah. means other than you know having to go on ebay and pay exorbitant prices you know if it's just not it's available what, yeah. through official oh. channels and you have to after all it's a bad news video really go out of your way to acquire a game then that is out of the market completely and for such games solely for the purpose of preservation of the game in a playable form by an eligible library archives or museum where such activities are carried out without any purpose of direct or indirect commercial advantage games that are out of the market the companies are not making any money from yeah. it so why not make it available for you know sort of research purposes public consumption through 
Call it piracy stealing is just an intimidation method. By pirating, you are not taking away the company's access to their own product. Stealing implies the victim loses something in the process. You are actually so smart. That is actually a very good point. True methods. <laughs> I... <laughs> I just remembered. Remember on the uh, on old DVDs when you would like uh, play it, where those like piracy movies played at the start, like those piracy ads. You wouldn't steal a car, or what? What was it? You wouldn't download a car. Yes, I would if I were able to. If I could, I would download a car. What do you mean? <laughs> if I could, I would. What do you mean? It's like libraries, museums, archives, you name it. With emulation being the main way to preserve these games, since a lot of these games are out of print and cannot be found, basically have... One big one for this, for example, is Nintendo DS games. Old Nintendo Game Boy games. All the old consoles, which... <laughs> Chat, they're now considered retro. The Nintendo DS is considered retro now. The Nintendo fucking DS is considered a retro console. Make it stop, chat. I don't want to age. I feel old. The Nintendo DS is a retro console now. Pokemon Diamond is a retro game now. Make it stop. Either way. Nint <coughs> Nintendo isn't giving us any possible way of actually replaying those fucking games unless they remake the pokemon games like they don't with diamond and pearl but they're not remaking every single fucking game and they're not offering their own emulators anymore so huh huh like what are we supposed to do like i think preservation is important not only for the sake of a game still being playable but for history to learn from it like every fucking Game in the end is a fucking historical footprint for game development. There are stores who try to repair old games and consoles. That's really nice. Switch Online exists, but they don't offer any of the mainline games. And they that's what I mean. They used to on the Nintendo DS. On the Nintendo DS, you used to be able to download Pokemon Red and then transfer the Pokemon from Pokemon Red onto the Pokemon Bank, so you could like get. Fucking shiny Mew from that. Like, bro! Why doesn't it exist? We have the software, but they don't let us do it. You mean the 3DS? Yeah, I believe it was the 3DS. Won't Pokemon X and Y be the retro by that definition? I believe so. I believe so. I believe they are. Digital versions of these games be able to re be run through emulation for the purposes of research, for studies, for scholastic purposes, and the like. Any electronic distribution display or performance made outside of the physical premises of an eligible library, archives, or museum of works preserved under this paragraph may be made only for a limited time and after the eligible institution acts to ensure that users seeking off-premises access to works are doing so primarily for the purposes of private study, scholarship, teaching, or research by one, specifically determining that the user's interest is private study, scholarship, teaching, or research. Two, instituting access restrictions so being, appropriate to the... So basically not being allowed to play it. ...nature of the use and the material. And three, notifying users that they are receiving access to copyrighted material subject to adherence with applicable laws. This proposal seems pretty reasonable to me on top of making sure that a game is truly just not accessible and not reasonably available in the commercial marketplace. There are also checks and balances to ensure that somebody gaining access to a game would do so for the purposes of private study, scholarship, teaching, or research. So it's just basically, hey, how about we extend libraries so that we include video games as well because those are part of history. Those are art as well. Just a few days ago, the Copyright Office responded and unfortunately, it's not the answer we're looking for. They basically said, nah, bro. The lobbyists <laughs> nah, bro. and the Entertainment uh, Software Association and uh, all of the game publishers have a point. Now, before I delve deeper into this, you know what's just as important as preserving history is preserving your private information and making sure that nefarious entities don't gain access to that. Which brings us to the sponsor of today's video, Delete Me, a subscription service Delete dedicated me? to keeping your personal information safe and private. Data brokers are constantly out there trying to profit off. So basically, you can play it just for the sake of enjoyment. Yeah, which I think is stupid. Like, yes, it's important to preserve it for 
learning opportunities, but if it exists, why are you not able to play it? Like, especially if no one's making money off of it for, like, non-profit. Like, oh my god. So stupid. Selling your personal data to nefarious actors. So it is more important than ever to be proactive about your digital footprint. And that's where Delete Me comes in. With this service in one fell soup, you can delete your personal information from search results and hundreds of data broker websites. Everything from your name, age, past and present addresses, photos, email, phone numbers, relatives, social media, occupation, marital. Everyone knows your data. Everyone knows what you were eating today and the day before and everyone knows what you're going to eat tomorrow ain't gonna change anything <laughs> unfortunately god damn i'm such a doomer that is property value you name it information that could be used in shady ways i didn't realize just how public my data was until i saw my first report from delete me detailing just how many data broker websites had my personal information as someone like me who is a public figure and at higher risk of being the target of potential harassment doxing scams identity theft stalking you name it that's a pretty major concern so delete me coming in to do a big sweep came as a big relief i also have the security of knowing sure, that delete yeah. me is constantly active monitoring sites and removing data. Who's to say that delete me isn't selling your data? Huh? Who's to say that? I'm such a doomer. That as needed <laughs> and providing privacy reports every three months to keep me in the know about all that stuff. You can even make your own custom requests to have your information removed from specific sources by Delete Me's experts. So if digital privacy is a top priority for you, you can protect your Do data with Delete Me <laughs> by using my link, joindeletemecom slash yong20 and my code yong20 to get 20% off at checkout with family mm -hmm. plans available as well. You can also find all of this in the description and comment section below. So as I was saying, the Copyright Office just straight up denied this request. And this is an extensive document highlighting the reasoning behind Why? this. But we got yeah. New Salad Games Radar, who kind of basically summarized all of this with oh, cool. this quote from that document from the US Copyright Office, who said no with the following ruling. The register concludes that proponents did not show that removing the single user limitation for preserved computer programs or permitting off-premises access to video games are likely to be non-infringing. She also notes the greater risk of market harm with removing the video game exemptions premises limitation given the market for legacy video games Market harm for legacy video games? Excuse me? Are they counting on... Like, what market value does people selling the game have to each other have to the government? What? Texas. How? How? It's if they are sold privately to each other between two people. For example, Facebook Marketplace. It's income as if people weren't dodging such taxes. That's what I mean, as if, right? Like people that are privately selling shit on ma Facebook Marketplace, they're usually giving out cash. Secondhand shop taxes and such. That could be a point though. That could be a point where it's um You know what? I wanna look something up. I I had bought myself a uh used uh 3DS console recently, right? I talked about this. Let me open up Amazon because there was something written about uh taxes on there. Let me give me a moment. I, I can't exactly find what I was looking for, but it did have uh, the VAT added. I did have it. It's called Buttering. Not sure what it's called. Uh, Buttering, trading something for something. Yeah, Buttering is something else, right? Everyone loves Texas. Yeah, But I course. mean, the market is there for legacy books as well, but people still buy those while there are still libraries to allow people to that rent is those also out. True. That's a good point. to access them and to have those aspects. People like owning shit. People do like owning shit. But at the same time, there are libraries that 
Preserve shit. Yeah. Preserved. Legacy video games can still be released in new forms, whether it's, you know, remasters or whether it's just a re-release on a new platform, which is convenient for people who really heavily use that particular platform. Or, you know, if you have a console like Switch, which makes the experience portable, people will still be incentivized to buy those legacy yeah. games. Literally. <laughs> the pause. I mean, I literally bought a DS the other day. On those consoles, and you can still preserve the you know, original versions of those games. You know, if you want access to, to the original N64 Ocarina of Time, you still have the 3DS version out there, the Ocarina of Time 3. Imagine buying clothes, but not actually owning them. Fucking imagine that. Imagine you bought a license to your clothes. And, like, once the store goes out of fucking business, you weren't allowed to wear them anymore <laughs> because you didn't actually own them. Oh my god, that's disgusting. You know what's funny? If Nintendo releases NES and SNES game for Switch, how much do you think they make for that shit? A lot! A lot! Definitely! And they did release some NES and SNES games with their uh, Switch um, online shit. They did! Their fucking sales went up for Switch online because of that. If a game is not on GOG, I ain't buying. Hell, I generally don't buy them anymore. Oh. Sorry for coming to work naked, boss. My clothes license expired. <laughs> Have you had a forced arbitration for socks inside the pack? No, I haven't. What? What the hell? What the hell? 3D, and if that game re-releases on the Switch, then you can play it on the Switch, and that's there's still a market there because of the convenience yeah. of having that on that platform. Yes. While still allowing us to revisit. Yes, yes, yes. I would play Nintendo 3DS games on the Switch if I could. I wouldn't have bought a freaking Nintendo 3DS if I could play it on the Switch. Like, bro. History and see what the very original version of that game was like. When it comes to movies, we have seen re-releases of old movies in Blu-ray form and 4K yeah. and whatnot. Yes. You can still do things with legacy content that still makes it a product that people will desire. Usually when you re-release a legacy video game, it tends to come with additional features, additional enhancements, some quality of life elements infused into it, enhanced graphics, upscale resolution, you name yep, it. Yep, and yep, you can yep, also yep. add extra bits of content, maybe, you know, never before seen digital art that you can put in there after you beat the game, you know, stuff like that, that makes these re-releases still very much uh, something you can put out in the market and make money off of while still allowing people to see the history of that particular game through a library that maybe allows you to gain access to the OG version of that game. It's the same way that books work. It's the same way that, you know, movies and, and rental for those movies and libraries right. work. Industry lobby groups and the ESA argue that their licenses, licenses. I, I, I watched S1 talk about the shit, right? Licenses shouldn't exist. As in licenses for a product. It, it shouldn't exist. It's a man-made product. A license is a man-made product. And licenses do not exist in the nature. And we just gotta change fundamentally how we fucking think about, like, owning shit. But hey, you're not going to own anything. And you're going to be happy. You're gonna live in a pot. And we're gonna eat the bugs. Am I right? Oh, and also, you can now fucking end it in a pod. Have you guys seen that? You can now peacefully end it in a pod. Lovely. There will be a significant risk that construct? preserved yeah. video games would be used for recreational purposes instead of, you know, scholastic purposes for research and the like, that people will take advantage of that to just play games instead of, like, learn about them. But when you play a game, you are automatically, like, learning about the game you know what i mean like just because the the playing of video games is fun doesn't mean it isn't educational within itself just like True. you know when you're reading a book like you can have fun with that while it's still being either for research purposes or true 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 i would say for example best example i could get right now for this is neo automata neo automata is a fucking old school tragedy story like the kind of story you would think about learning about in fucking English liter literature. That kind of story. Because it's a pure tragedy without a happy ending. Well, if you look away from the true ending anyway. 
it's a story about fucking existential dread, existential crises, coming to terms with how you live. Amazing game, but to be honest, it is. It is an amazing game, but it's a tragedy. They don't write stories anymore like this. People do not write stories like this anymore. And it's a beautifully written story. You can... This game literally gets you thinking. Or just to learn about something, or just to delve into uh, the world of a mind who came up with this fictional universe, you name it. And not to mention that, you know, when it comes to like books and movies and rentals for that, as Games Radar points out here, libraries already lend out digital versions of more traditional media like books and movies to everyday that people is true. for what can only be yeah. described as yeah. recreational purposes. You yeah, absolutely true. And libraries, they do have quote unquote digital content, right? They do have games and shit. Oh. You don't actually have to go buy a copy of the Harry Potter series to read it. You can go to your local library and rent yeah, out the books. That's how I, that's how I read all the Harry Potter books. I I didn't own a single Harry Potter Harry Potter book. I read them all through my library. Doesn't mean that the market for the Harry Potter books isn't there, but that's just more convenient for certain folks. People who rent Also libraries do have to buy the book too. The libraries don't just fucking get the book for free. Fucking libraries have to buy that shit too, you know? Those books from libraries do so in part for recreational purposes because they like and, to- And usually they have multiple of fucking books of the same book there. So multiple people can rent it out. Partake and to engage with the fictional worlds written in those books. Uh, so like the argument that video games should somehow be different is ridiculous. There's no reason that- vi Video games are being offered in my local libraries, by the way. They've been for years now. Video games should be exempt from the Maybe library so treatment, true, if true. you will, given that it is just another medium akin to books and movies and music and, and visual art and you name it. You know, it's the entertainment that video game companies and the ESA have to have to argue such things and to want legacy games that are not reasonably accessible on the market, that they're not making any money off of, to not be allowed to be preserved and to not be allowed to be accessed in a library mm. kind of way is just, uh, I mean, stupid. it exemplifies some of the worst That's aspects stupid. of the games industry. The Video Game History oh, Foundation, which did the research on how 87% of legacy games are just straight up no longer available, have disappeared from the face of the earth, did release a statement on this. It is stated right here in their headline that the US Copyright Office announced today that they would not grant an exemption in support of video game preservation. Our statement, for the past three years, the Video Game History really Foundation sad. has been supporting the Software Preservation Network on a petition to allow libraries and archives to remotely share digital access to out-of-print games in their collections, specifically out-of-print games. Under the current anti-circumvention rules in section uh, 1201 well, of, of the DMCA, libraries and oh. archives are unable to break copy protection. Of course it's fucking DMCA, man. Bro, DMCA is so fucking outdated and needs to get updated. DMCA serves... Helps no one. No one. Like... Oh, DMCA makes me angry on games in order to make them remotely accessible to researchers. While we're disappointed by the Copyright Office's decision, we have no regrets about going through this process. Over the last three years, working on the petition has helped us generate important research, notably our survey of the video game uh, reissue market in the United States report, which proved that around 87% of video games released in the United States before 2010 remain out of print. 87%! Combined... I didn't think it would be that huge. Wow! At this point, I believe the only way to remove the MCA is to hold con Congress, Parliament at gunpoint and force them to vote. <laughs> I unfortunately do think you have a point. And efforts with SPN have raised significant public point. awareness of these issues and have already made an impact throughout the games industry and preservation communities. Indeed, uh, what the Video Game History Foundation has done despite not having succeeded in this particular endeavor ultimately has still been very valuable has raised a lot of awareness on this issue. It's a sure, yeah. topic that myself and many so other... May so maybe that it can be revisited uh, at a later point with like more better argumentation.
content creators covered in videos and uh, it's something that has in turn allowed uh, the masses to kind of make this an issue that they raise the companies. The statement concludes with, unfortunately, lobbying efforts by rights holder groups continue to hold back progress. During our hearing with the Copyright Office, the Entertainment Software Association, the ESA declared that they would never support remote game access for research purposes under any conditions. Like, what? fuck the ESA, man. The games industry's yeah, absolutist what the fuck? position, which Piss the ESA's off. own members have declined to go on the record to support, forces researchers to explore extra legal methods to access the vast majority of out-of-print video games that are otherwise unavailable. Basically, piracy and emulation, stuff that these corporations despise but are enabling and are encouraging when piracy is the more convenient way to access certain games people gravitate towards that practice again True. as gabe newell has mentioned before piracy is a service problem you put yep. out a service that's yep. better than yep. piracy yep 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 100 this say it again fucking say it certain again games people gravitate towards that practice again as gabe newell has mentioned before piracy is a service problem you Absolutely. Absolutely. fucking -lutely. That is so 100% fucking true, man. Holy shit. But if the EU rules it, then they'll have no way of suing EU citizens. True. 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 I was gonna quote that, Lamo. <laughs> it is so... Such... Such a good quote. You put out a service that's better than piracy, piracy will drop because it's just more true. convenient to support yes. the official people, way of doing People will always go the more convenient route. People are lazy. People will always choose what's more convenient to them. And if the service is more convenient than piracy, they will go with that. I mean, there's a reason why I literally bought a fucking 3DS second hand instead of going through piracy. Because piracy here is very, very, treated very, very fucking, treat, treated very fucking harshly in Germany. I've mentioned this before, someone my stepfather knew got fucking jailed because of piracy. I, I do not, I do not tread lightly with piracy. When buying never be owning, then piracy never be stealing. Some guy on the internet. <laughs> things because it's just better implemented, it's easier, it's, and, and it's got better features. And, and what I wanted to mention with that, why I brought that up, that I bought the 3DS instead of fucking, uh, fucking pirating the game is, because to me, it is easier to just buy the console off of Amazon, off of someone reselling the fucking product, instead of going through the heaps and hoops of actually pirating something and eventually, or maybe potentially, getting me into fucking trouble, which I'd rather not. I always purchase games because I can. Not everyone can afford to spend 60 to 70 dollars on every single game. That is very true, too. That is also very true. If you look at countries like, I think, Brazil, who who doesn't have um, local uh, prices, I believe. It's so fucking expensive. Games are so fucking expensive there. Same for, um, for Turkey. Turkey has... Turkey does have local prices in comparison to that. They do have local prices with some services anyway, with like Steam. There's a lot of cheap shit going on there. Like, a, they have a lot of cheap stuff. There was a time where people would buy, not would buy, would get Turkish accounts and buy the games off of Turkey. Because they fucking ruined, <laughs> fucking gamers ruined the economy in Turkey even further because of that man. For us, games is equivalent of one week of food. I'm from Argentina. Jesus fucking Christ, man. That's, ah, oh, that's crazy. The fact that Steam made refunds so easy made me pirate less because I can actually try the damn game before buying them. That is also true. Like, being able to refund a game within, like, of two hours of uh, playment of the game is fucking huge. Uh, it's just more easily accessible, but game companies are adding friction in that process that makes piracy a compelling proposition for folks. We're not done fighting here, says Video Game History Foundation. We'll continue our advocacy for greater access and legal allowance for video game preservation and working with members of the games industry to increase internal awareness around these issues. We encourage members of the games industry who are disappointed by the Copyright Office's decision to ask their leadership to push for greater support for the work of libraries and archives within their industry groups.
So unfortunately, the Copyright Office's kind of denial of this proposal of this exemption is a major step back for video game preservation. But, you know, yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean the fight is over so forever. Long, uh, a lot of entities are still fighting and raising awareness, whether it's the Video Game uh, History Foundation or, you know, the Stop Killing Games movement. And it's something that keeps getting called out. So eventually, I think uh, all this will come to a boiling point where legislation will eventually have to be enacted. Europe in particular are very, you know, are stricter about consumer protection laws. So hopefully laws that... Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have a law that forbids company that officially forbids company to make a product for it to just go to waste so you have to rebuy something obviously it still exists look at printer ink and printers and fucking iphone still being sold people are still doing it but i'm pretty sure that there is something with the laws just that it's not being <laughs> really upheld properly but yeah uh, are implemented there should legislation lean towards the consumer arguments about really how are. the current law surrounding video game preservation and the lack of protection on consumers libraries aren't enough hopefully the laws passed there will eventually have a ripple effect that will eventually force the u.s which is such a major market for video games to change their stance on things but for now, this is kind of uh, what we have, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, I'm excited to see what the Video Game History Foundation will do for future really efforts. Hope that goes saying here, we're not done fighting yet. Uh, this is just one setback in what is a very long-term battle. Yeah. We've yeah. Issues plant up solence is tricky to proof. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Yeah. We've lost the battle, but not I the war. Money. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything you need to know about the current situation surrounding games preservation and the Video Game Good History video. Foundation's statement on a recently failed effort. But uh, the future is still young. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on all this and uh, what you think uh, we need to do as just a collective to make some change on this front. I think ultimately it's just keep speaking out, keep contacting leadership and uh, government officials and keep raising awareness. Uh, and eventually this will hopefully snowball into something that is not stoppable. But share your hopefully. thoughts in the comments below and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out. Peace. Good video. Free iPhone 16s. What? Uh. Well, nothing more to add. That's really about it. I hope this goes somewhere. Like, I really hope video game preservation goes somewhere. Apart from that, see you next time, YouTubes.